What's up, everybody? Shane Larson here, host of the Game Time Guru podcast. Today on the show, we're bringing on a former Major League umpire to share his stories with us. You don't want to miss this episode of the Game Time Guru. So, what time is it? Game Time Guru! If you're sick of the mainstream sports outlets, well, so was I. So I started my own show. I'm Shane Larson, and this is the Game Time Guru. It's different than other talk shows. I'm providing a panoramic view on sports so you can see them through a different lens. So buckle up and let's go. Shane Larson here, host of the Game Time Guru podcast. I'm glad to have you guys with us. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, This is a great episode to get started with if this is your first time tuning in. So before we get started, though, it would be awesome if you guys could help me out. Go leave me a review and subscribe on whichever podcast platform that you're listening on. Uh, reviews are super helpful for, for my show. It helps you know bring more exposure to the show when people are searching for new shows to listen to. But guys, as a sports fan, you guys all know this. There has to be some sort of officiating in all the sports that we listen to. And so that's why I decided to bring on an official. It was a former Major League umpire. He's got crazy stories to tell. And I think you guys are going to love this one. Um, he'll be talking to us about a couple things like some of the guys that he got to toss some of the big name players that he tossed out. And, uh, if you were, if you caught this on social media, you probably saw my video, um, for the, the ad for this, this episode. And it was when he tossed out, uh, Donaldson and he kind of discusses that whole entire process. And it was kind of funny, uh, but he's got some great stories and, and you'll see the stresses and, and the lifestyle of a major league umpire, someone trying to make it, make it through. But there is a reason we need umps to be able to play the game. We need officials to be able to play whatever sport we're playing because without them, there's no, it's, it's almost like having laws to follow you have to follow the rules and if you got to have somebody enforcing those rules so uh, but you have to also remember that they're human too and so you'll hear his story and it's going to be awesome before we get started um, we just have a couple housekeeping items if you guys want an audible free trial uh, to listen to your favorite audiobooks make sure you use audibletrial.com slash the game time guru um, again that's audibletrial.com slash the game time guru if you like podcasts you probably like audiobooks they're easier to listen to um, if you're doing long drives a long commute to and from work you can throw in an audiobook a podcast whatever um, so that's why I like audible it's really simple um, you can download a you know books to your to your device and then just listening to them in your car on your way home so audibletrial.com slash the game time guru check that out make sure you also check out podcoin you can find my show there if you don't have it on apple podcasts or google play music or whichever other google podcast spotify if you if you don't have one of those or youtube even um, you can always check out podcoin because podcoin actually pays you to listen to pod, uh, podcasts so if you're a podcast consumer um you can actually get paid to listen to my podcast. They'll pay you in what they call pod coins, which you can then, you know, turn in for gift cards and stuff. So you can exchange them guys. I I'm so happy to bring this guest on. I'm very anxious. I I want you guys to hear this. Uh, Toby Bassner is his name and he is a stud, super good interview, very informative. And I think you guys are going to love it. So uh, make sure if you need to take a break for a second, pause it right now because we're going to get started in the interview. Pause it. Uh, If you need to leave me a review, pause it, go right now and leave me a review, Uh, but grab, you know, a drink, Put some popcorn in there, listen up, and enjoy the interview with Toby. Guys, we want to welcome onto the show today former Major League umpire Toby Basner. Toby, thanks for joining the show. Yeah, great great to be here. Thanks for having me, Shane. For sure, man. I'm, I'm so excited to have you, Toby, because I love bringing on uh, personalities from all over the sports world. And, you know, for myself, Toby, I'm, I'm one of those guys. I've very, been very open about the fact that I dislike uh, referees. I've had a bad relationship with them. It's like a love-hate, <laughs> so to speak, right? But um, we know that you guys have a tough job and that it's extremely difficult, but you guys do a good job and you do what you can because there is a human element to it. So I'm excited to get to know your story a little bit more today. Um, can you give us a little bit of a background about your, you know, your history in baseball? Well, I uh, I grew up in Georgia, just outside Atlanta, and uh, was always involved in baseball at a very young age. Um, played all the way up through high school, and uh, my father actually he had a uh, a youth organization that he provided all the umpires for. And I was on the field um, umpiring by the time I was 12 years old and playing at the same time. Um, I remember a couple of different instances when I was actually uh, finishing up high school baseball practice and then going off to umpire a high school game. So it's always been a, a big, big part of my life. And um, a couple of years after high school, I just decided to try to pursue the professional career you know it's interesting toby because my friend who is he works with me and he's on my softball team he mentioned to me that he was actually interested and he thought about being an umpire um 
but he he figures now he's too old for it. So I'm curious, you know, what's the the process? How long is the process to make it to the the higher levels of you know being an umpire in baseball? Well, that uh, that kind of varies uh, person to person. Everyone has their own um, path to uh, to move up the ladder, as as I'd say. Um, but it starts out at the same place. Uh, there's two professional baseball umpire schools. One is uh, Harry Wendelstadt school and that's in uh, Daytona Beach, Florida. And uh, the other one is actually in Vero Beach School and um, can't think of it. They changed the name of it, but it's another professional umpire school there. And each each program is about five, six weeks long. And um, the classmates, uh, or the class size is usually about 100 to 150, I'd say, per each class. And they take the top 25 of each of those schools after you compete through the five weeks and you go off to uh, an evaluation course. And that is um, in Barrow Beach. And that's a 10-day course. And so all the 50 guys are now together competing for um, opening positions in professional baseball. So you start out at the rookie level and, you know, you work your way up through through all the different steps of the minor leagues at that point. You know, Toby, I would imagine that getting better at, you know, being an umpire would come with reps just like anything is. You know, like if you're an athlete, the more repetitions you get, the better you are. So I'm, I'm curious from your standpoint, when did you feel comfortable and more confident in your abilities? Uh, did you, is there like certain things you had to do? Did you just get more reps? Is there a certain time frame that it took you to get so confident at making the right calls? Did you have to, you know, switch from being behind home plate, being at first base, being a second, whatever? Um, just kind of explain that process for us. Well, yeah, uh, Shane, reps is, is a huge part of it. Um, I got a pitching machine in my backyard and uh, I just take pitches um, all the time. No, I'm just kidding. I've never had a <laughs> pitching machine in my backyard. I, I was a, that was a running umpire joke. Usually our first time seeing pitches is uh, first day of spring training. Um, so as all these fans are probably uh, grimacing now is <laughs> why don't these umpires ever try to work on their craft? Well, we, we do. Uh, we do a lot. Uh, we watch a lot of video um, at the big league level. Uh, we had access to all the video of our games. And on top of that, we had a uh, uh, computerized uh camera program called uh, ZE and that was a uh, it generated the score of your strike zone every single game behind the plate as well as um, we also were under tight watch with all of our plays at first as you know uh, they have instant replay now in the big league so all those things are constantly being um, recorded and and, and so we have those tools to revert back to and learn about where our positioning was for those uh, those plays or, you know, those the, rec- the recognition of those pitches that came through. And um, you can kind of train your brain to make, make certain adjustments. Um, by all means, I'm not saying that uh, no matter how many adjustments you make, you're going to be perfect because that's uh, far from the truth. But it, it does help you to kind of navigate the system a little bit. For sure. And, you know, from a player's perspective, we we always give the officials crap. Like, we always do, and the coaches do, and the fans do, and the media does. And they have a very difficult job. We all know that. Um, there's a human element to it, like I said before. And so we know there's so much pressure on these officials. And I'm curious, and I mean this with all due respect, what – what made you want to actually go through that, knowing you were going to have the, you know, the heckling fans and the media and all the pressures that come from the outside to do this career? Uh, and I'm just curious what your thoughts are, and you know, because I saw that you were you had done six years in the majors. Is that correct? Yeah, I went up and down for six years. Um, uh, honestly, Shane, that's a great question. You know, um, the driving passion. Well, for me personally, I just. Um, I, I loved the uh, <clears throat> the respect that you'd get on the field, um, although you don't see it very often. Um, but you're kind of looking at an outside perspective going in, as opposed to, you know, there may be a simple discussion of balls and strikes, or they're we're calling each other by first name, and fans see uh, a player talking to an umpire and will automatically think it's a bad thing. I know I kind of got off on a little tangent there, but 
the next day, let's say you're working third base, you know, a player or manager come up to you and said, hey, Tony, you did a great job buying the plate the other day. Even if they lost the game, getting those little uh, those little affirmations really help to drive you to be a little bit better of an umpire, as well as I, I just, I, I love working with people and I I like being able to kind of uh, manage a situation and be able to kind of take in all the things that are thrown my way and kind of find a sense of, uh, of calmness about it. So it's, it's definitely the, the challenge of it is really driving. Um, and, uh, just some of the, uh, the gratitude that you get. It's very rare, but you do get it on occasion. And, and that's, kind of keeps you coming back. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, whenever you have the the positives like that, it, it does. It gives you that extra boost of motivation to keep coming back. And I think that's for any job for that matter or anything that you're doing in life. So that's awesome to hear that the umps get to have that too. So that's good. That's good. Now, I, I'm curious, Toby, you've been in, you, you, you know, obviously we're an official in some, you know, big leagues, big level. And I want to know if is there a favorite ballpark that you ever got to go to? And is there any kind of call or anything like that that you wish you could take back during a career? Um, I, anytime you got to work in a big league ballpark, it was always uh, a blessing. Um, it was something that was the pinnacle of what you had been striving to achieve for so many years. So with that being said, I, I definitely loved working at any ballpark that I was given the opportunity to work in. Um, but there were a couple of favorites. Uh, Fenway, and Wrigley are right up there. And then, uh, you know, Dodger Stadium. I liked a lot of the older ballparks. Uh, the character uh, just felt like there was a, a greater sense of um, engagement with the game and the fans. And um, so that was a really, that was a really fun atmosphere to work in. Um, I got a ton, I've made a ton of bad calls in my career and made a ton of good calls in my career. Um, some stand out, some don't. Um, you can never take it back. It was always one of those things. If, uh, I used to tell people, they'd ask me, how many calls you missed this year when I was going up and down? And I'd, I'd show them, a, I'd hold my hands out like I was showing size of a fish. And it'd be like two or three feet. And they're like, what do you mean two or three feet? Well, if you tack together all the calls that I've missed this year, it would, it would be equivalent to about two feet. So uh, I always... <laughs> Yeah. So, and that kind of helped put it in perspective for me in the sense that like, I'm going to mess up. I'm going to miss plays at the end of the day. If you look at the scale on how you miss them and that keeps getting smaller and smaller, you know, you're getting better. Um, you know, it takes 10,000 hours to be an expert at something and, uh, kind of going back to what my drive was, um, previously, like, I felt like I was an expert on the field and I was continuing to get better with my craft. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're going to make mistakes. Everybody does. Uh, we just get recognized for them a little bit harsher than other people. Yeah, totally. And you know, it's interesting as you're saying that, I guess it's the same mentality, you know, for anybody in anything sports related, especially like if you're not winning, you're learning. There's no such thing as quote unquote losing. It's either you win or you learn. So I guess you got to have that same kind of mentality, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't want you to think that they don't weigh on you because um, that would be a, a thousand percent false. It's it's really about how you're going to deal with the weight because um, no matter if you miss a call by a foot or miss it by a centimeter, it it almost still hurts as bad, especially um, in my position, which I never had a full-time contract, so I was always competing. So basically I was on a 14-year job interview to, to make it to the major leagues. And um, so any little blip on that radar is going to um, play some head games with you. You're going to get in, you know, some weird funks. And um, another difficult part about it is, you know, typically you're traveling alone. Um, you're with a crew, but as a call-up umpire, you're in a position where you're living out of a suitcase and you're going from the minor leagues to the major leagues and you're going from crew to crew. So you don't necessarily have, uh, that, that tight knit group of a crew that you're on the field with at all times. 
So you take a lot of those um, burdens or misses home with you, and home is the hotel. So it has a tendency to weigh on you, which um, which is kind of a big reason why I wanted to move to Boise and kind of start start fresh and new atmosphere and um, a new lifestyle that kind of didn't have all that that weight of uh, some of the baseball. Um, misses you know ultimately it's, it's the misses that kind of get you in those weird funks totally i can imagine that 100 percent. and i'm kind of curious now though toby now that you've kind of moved away from the officiating game uh do you still watch baseball and if you do and if you follow it do you see the game differently now that you've been on the other side of it yeah i went through a lot of different phases with with baseball i mean ultimately i kind of went through where everything was pre-replay to everything now everybody just goes runs in the dugout and checks the camera and um another thing with baseball was like towards you know the end of my career when i was on replay is you know you're getting broadcasted amongst millions of people that you missed a call as opposed to maybe they don't really know and then you kind of look at it at the end of the game so that aspect has seriously changed the game um, drastically, it has it has taken away a lot of uh, I think a lot of the value of of the officiating career. Um, and um, but now I, I don't watch much baseball now. I am still a big fan of the game, although I don't I don't necessarily feel that the game um, is what it used to be. I feel like. Um, there's a lot of ways of how just the levels of respect have uh, kind of deteriorated in baseball. Um, I mean, I can remember vividly walking on a field with a 20, 30 year uh, crew chief and no one saying a word for an entire weekend. And now you have that same crew chief that walks on the field in the major league field and you know, you can have a guy with a cup of coffee in the big leagues and he's talking smack to the 30 year vet. So like those kind of trends have really kind of flipped over on to a different side that isn't really, it's kind of lost a little bit of its, um, of a little bit of its passion. I feel totally, I can totally see that now that you just broke that down. So yeah, it's very interesting. I, I, I love talking to people like yourself, Toby, because it gives me a different perspective on it and seeing it through somebody else's eyes. Um, can totally see that. Now I need your, your opinion on something else too. You know, there's been a lot of, you know, this discussion back and forth and, and especially, you know, big time sports, whether it be collegiate at the high, highest level or professional on whether or not officials should speak to the media. Obviously there's going to be missed calls and sometimes they're detrimental and they're game changing calls. And I'm curious from your perspective, do you think officials should have to respond to the media the same way that players do and the same way coaches do? Should they be held responsible that way? And that, should that be part of their, uh, I guess their job, their career? Um, I, I think under a couple conditions, it, it would be fine. Um, and one would have to be when, when broadcasters for MLB games understand the rules and understand how the game works, then umpires can be held accountable and be able to deliver some stuff to the press or the media. Um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, do us any justice when we're framed in a negative, uh, in a negative outline prior to getting any sort of questioning or, or framed in a negative outline by broadcasters who have no idea what the rules are and they're making up something to prevent dead air. But in hindsight, it's just making the umpires look bad. And that's, that falls, uh, that falls as a shame to the viewers because the viewers are now being misinformed on how baseball is. So kind of a full circle back to answering questions with the media. I think, when when there's other people around us that can have a high standard for the game, then I would feel that it would be fine for umpires to to speak to the media and kind of explain some things. But ultimately, we we uh, <laughs> we have an easy enough time getting getting scrutinized and getting judged by the media without even talking to the media. So <laughs> then talking to the media it just brings on more 
more fuel to the fire. <laughs> totally, no, I get it. I get it 100%. And uh, that's a great response, Toby. I appreciate that. So if Bleacher Report or ESPN, anyone's listening to this, um, you can feel free to take that snippet and uh, use that for, for future reference. And I'm curious, Toby, when in your career – who was your favorite player that you, you know, got to be around? I'm sure you got to be around a lot of big names. Yeah, um, a, a lot of the players were really pretty solid people. Um, you know, they come running out to the position, say, what's up, Toby? How's it going? You know, good job last night or whatever. But uh, there were a couple guys that that, uh, that stood out and took, took a little bit more time to just kind of get to know you and break the ice a little bit. Uh, for me, Mike, Mike, Mike Trout was one of those guys. Um, he was always very professional and, um, honest and upfront. And, um, so he stuck out for me and then it was always cool. Like going to the, going to the ballpark and seeing uh, former players around, um, uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Stands out. I remember working in Seattle and, and Ken Griffey Jr. Kind of just popped in the locker room and said, hello. And, you know, we all got to meet him and stuff like that. And, that says a lot about uh, those guys' character to be able to kind of step outside of their comfort zone and, and do that. Um, but, yeah, most of the guys were, were pretty classy, and a lot of them really understood where the line was when if they crossed it, then they would get ejected, and they knew that. And the next day was a brand-new day. So um, with that being said, everybody kind of was respectful in that regard. You know, I get the sense from the last 20 minutes of just talking with you that you're a pretty calm, cool, collected guy uh, from what I can tell. Um, but I was looking up some stuff on you, Toby, and, and there's been some times you've ejected a couple of players. And I and I, I wonder, I just wanted to know, like, you know, since there is a human element to it, like obviously players are going to say something and um, you can be calm, cool, collected, but there's also a breaking point, so to speak. I'm curious, do you have a, an ejection that you did, uh, somebody that you tossed in a game that sticks out to you? <laughs> Yeah, the way I kind of looked at ejections was um, I, I was always uh, pretty cool and collected, and I, I kind of had a wall up that uh, I would kind of picture in my mind like, all right, nothing is going to penetrate this wall, like nothing uh, offensive. Um, I'm strictly just looking for signs not to eject them, so that for them to eject themselves. Um, I, I kind of, you know, it, it was just kind of like a protocol thing. Like, all right, you're not going to listen to me when I'm telling you to <laughs> pipe down. Okay. I'm going to give you another warning. Okay. Now you're ejected. So <laughs> I never let it get, it, it get too. um, I never let it really work me up because one thing is umpires is we're kind of taught all the time to, to kind of, uh, be the bigger man and kind of rise above and, you know, let, let the 20 year old rookie be the 20 year old rookie and we'll, we'll be the mature, uh, umpire. So, uh, not to say that some umpires don't get heated. I mean, that's, that would be completely false, but I was never one of those guys that kind of let, uh, people really get under my skin. And if it was a situation where I, like, I first personally felt bothered by it, then I would probably just approach them straight up and be like, Hey, what's going on? Like, why are we not seeing eye to eye? Like what, 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 what needs to change here? You know, what, what needs to give because I'm out here working, you're out here working, you know, a couple of calls and go your way. If there's nothing I can do about it, I got to come out here and keep working. But I just want to let you know that there's no grudge here or whatever it might be, you know, just something um, kind of to help, lo- help loosen up the player a little bit to where, they didn't necessarily have to feel that, that awkward tension. So I try to get rid of a lot of that awkward tension whenever there was some, but there was definitely spots when you have to do that. Now I see on here, you've, you threw out Manny Machado. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Manny Machado. Um, I got him. It was a, it was a check swing and he just slammed his bat at, right at home plate after I called it. And, you know, just that was kind of an easy ejection. Um, yeah, I had another kind of crazy one with Josh Donaldson where he was uh, funny. He was actually running back to his dugout. This was in Minneapolis, and um, he had grounded out. And prior to the ground out, there was a pitch he didn't like that I called, and he kind of, you know, had a little had a little uh, tiff about it. So then he grounds out, and he's kind of like just trotting down to 
first base, and the Minnesota bench is yelling at him. They're saying, you know, swearing at him, yelling at him. I had no clue that they were yelling at him. I, I couldn't hear it at the time. And uh, so Donaldson, you know, never ends up making it to first, maybe just makes it there and turns around and comes back to his dugout. And he's on the left side of the dirt circle, so basically an extension of the right-handed batter's box. And he's going into his dugout. And he looks through the dirt circle at home plate, and he's got sunglasses on. I have sunglasses on. He looks at me, and he says, F you, and he's pointing and I'm like, all right, well, you're out of here. So, <laughs> and then he he runs up to me, he goes, no, Toby, Toby, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking, I was talking to them. And I said, Josh, that's the wrong time to be yelling at you through my face while you're trying to talk to them. So that was kind of a funny ejection. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's it's I can tell like just from listening to it, it's making me laugh. We're gonna have to find the clip um, of that, and I'll see if I can find it and post it uh, because that sounds really really awesome. Um, and you know the details of it too. It's funny because you remember it and you have the details all down for it, which is which is rad. Now, before we get going, I just want to know, like, for those who are aspiring to be, you know, umpires, they want to get into the officiating game for baseball. Since you have the experience, would you, you know, I know you went, you know, shortly after high school. I'm curious. Do you think that it's best to get into that professional field? Sorry, like into that career path, I should say, at a younger age, like right out of high school. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to do it as going into pro ball and, um, yeah, a younger age is, is definitely more preferable. Um, it can be, you got to kind of sometimes plan for about, you know, eight to 10 years working through the minor leagues, excuse me, before ever getting a shot at the major league level. So, um, usually people are, get their degree. And then they come down. It's kind of like a fallback plan. Um, I was in a different situation, and I went when I was uh, 19 and um, kind of <laughs> learned my life on the road. And uh, but yeah, and then if you don't, you know, if you just want to get involved in umpiring, I mean, I I give back a lot of my time to uh, to uh, Boise Little League umpires here, all in the Treasure Valley area, and uh, I come. And I just donate my time and, and do a couple speaking engagements and uh, we'll kind of pass on some information that I learned, some tips. And I got a little blog that I'm writing for them as well. But there's tons of different ways to get involved in being an umpire. I mean, one, you can volunteer. Two, you could sign up for the high school group and get involved in high school and work your way up to college and, um, you know, make a, make a career out of it. Um, it's not a, an extremely profitable career at that point, but... Uh, getting in some good D1 divisions, there's there's some decent money in that. But um, but yeah, if if there's a, a young baseball uh, player or fan and they uh, haven't really thought about umpiring, you don't even even need to have any sort of experience prior to going down to umpire school. Basically, you're going to get taught everything in the rule book. And you're going to get taught everything about how to be an umpire, and then uh, kind of what we talked to. I talked about earlier was um, now it's time to get your reps in and, and work your way up and learn. Awesome. Awesome. And Toby, if you could explain your career in one sentence as a major league umpire, what would it be? It was a extremely memorable experience with a lot of ups and a lot of downs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's like a, it's a comma, you know, you had to the beginning of the sentence and add that little snippet in at the end of it. So <laughs> with a lot of ups and a lot of downs, I love it, man. Toby, this has been Toby Basner, a uh, former major league umpire joined us today to talk about his story. So Toby, I appreciate you taking the time to join the game time guru, share your experience with us and, you know, educate the rest of our listeners on uh, what it's like to be an official in, in baseball. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. For sure, man, for sure. And for all the listeners out there, you guys know the drill. We'll be back next week with, another episode another interview with a sports figure um and you know what if you're subscribed to my show you actually get to hear some bonus episodes in the middle of the week as well when i give some recaps on some current sporting events so make sure you guys check it out and uh we'll talk to you next week guys thanks so much for listening to another episode of my show now if you could go and do me a favor head over to itunes give me five stars and leave me a review it would be greatly appreciated thanks guys appreciate your support